Stavros Dimas is the European Commissioner in charge of environmental issues. He's representing the European Union in the Bali Conference on Global Warming that started on December the 3rd. His challenge to persuade major polluters such as the US and the big emerging economies to rally to the EU's anti-CO2 emissions schemes. Commissioner Dimas is also trying to limit the influence of genetically modified organisms in European agriculture. Commissioner, welcome to Euronews. Bali, when it comes to this conference, what is at stake? Do you think that uh, the European Union will succeed in creating this sort of coalition of a willing uh, in tackling climate change? Actually, we need a consensus uh, in order to go ahead with uh, 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 an international agreement for the post-2012 uh, period uh, which will be uh, effective in reducing emissions and not permitting the global warming to go beyond the two degrees uh, Celsius that science tells us that is uh, the maximum that we should uh, uh, reach. Yeah, but this is the idea of a European Union which apparently is quite isolated. In Bali we can first of all agree to start negotiations and to, start to, to, to agree on the negotiating process and on a certain elements that a future agreement should contain. And uh, uh, by the end of 2009, we should have an agreement in place in order to, to, to fight climate change in an effective way. Uh, do you think that, politically speaking, uh, in order to achieve the goals that you have mentioned, is important uh, for all these countries, uh, as well as the European Union, to openly declare Kyoto death. And we see right now in the United States, in uh, the Congress, for example, or in uh, various uh, states, uh, introducing cap and trade uh, systems, uh, which are uh, what Kyoto uh, is telling us that is the most cost-efficient way to fight climate change. So we are going to have Kyoto perhaps under another name. But the, the basic structure of Kyoto will remain. And uh, uh, how we shall uh, arrange uh, for uh, bringing on board, uh, especially the developing countries, this is a task that we have uh, not only in Bali, but uh, the months and years coming. Last winter you had a sort of misunderstanding, let's call it this way, with one of your colleagues, uh, Mr. Verheugen, Commissioner Verheugen, on car emissions. Uh, don't you think that this is a contradictory message sent by the European Commission? No, no I think that uh, uh, Vice President Verhoegen and myself have both agreed, uh, along with uh, the other 25 commissioners, on our uh, climate change and cars strategy, which is uh, to reduce emissions from cars to a hundred from motor vehicle technology to 130 grams uh, minus 10 grams achieved by other means, for example, air conditioning of the cars or uh, use of biofuels. So we shall reach the 120 grams per kilometer objective. Do you really think that uh, renewable can be developed without nuclear? Uh, renewables, uh, not only uh, I believe, I'm sure that they're going to, uh, to be developed, and they are going to play a great uh, role in uh, fighting climate change and also uh, to uh, guide our industries in the, the European Union. Nuclear is something that uh, for, the European, for the European Commission is... Uh, uh, we, we are neutral, I would say. We do not take sides because there are cer certain member states which are uh, relying a lot on nuclear energy, like France, for example, 80 percent of its electricity comes from uh, uh, nuclear. Some countries like Finland uh, and some other countries are uh, introducing nuclear and some others are phasing out of nuclear. There, there is a sort of, uh, say, row of polemic around two particular GMOs, maize crop, one is the BT-11 and the other one is the 1507. Um, you have a particular position, uh, while other commissioners uh, have not the same position. And the commissioner apparently is apparently, is apparently split on this uh, issue. 
Could you tell us something more about uh, We have a tradition in the Barroso Commission to decide by consensus. So I'm sure that we shall find the right uh, answer and the, uh, we shall reach the right decision on this uh, issue. We do not know the long-term uh, effects of uh, cultivation of these uh, two maize uh, varieties. But um, apparently the, um, the authority, the Agency for uh, Food Safety, the European Agency for Food Safety, uh, didn't give a, 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 an opinion that was against these two maize. Is it true? Regarding health, you are right. Regarding long-term effects, uh, we have certain other studies which indicate uh, that there could be problems. So we have to, uh, to be very careful because if you have a contamination from uh, GMOs, then it will be very difficult to uh, come back to the previous situation. So there are uh, differences of opinion and uh, 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 this uh, creates certain problems. Uh, because in certain countries, public opinion is very strong against uh, GMOs. But still, what uh, we have to see is what science tells us, and all our decisions should be science-based. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much.